Welcome back and in today's five minute revision, we're going to take a look at output devices. So we've looked at input devices, we should know what they are now. So an output device takes some data produced by a computer and turns it into something that, not strictly true, but a human readable form. So printing something out where we can read it, an image on the screen, but obviously it could be output to another computing device as well. Sometimes an output from a computer is used to operate another device, such as a loudspeaker or an actuator or a motor. But the most common ones, as we know, are printers, monitors, screens, TVs, loudspeakers, that kind of thing. But one thing we need to know about is printers. So we've got inkjet printers, laser printers, and dot matrix printers. So inkjet printers spray ink onto the page. Laser printers use dry powdered ink called toner, and then they heat that up and melt it, essentially. And a dot matrix printer is a really old kind of printer, still used sometimes in like factories and things, but they're like impact printers where they actually punch into the page. That's why they're really noisy. You could use any of these, but there's quite a lot of, uh, especially exam questions, like saying issues with uh, laser printers because of the toner, it can um, rot particles in the air that makes it hard to breathe. Inkjet printers are quite expensive um in terms of buying all the colors and things like that um and dot matrix are good in like tough environments like in a factory or something like that or like a workshop 3d printers use plastic filament or powdered resin to create a 3d uh, object so some people print figures with them some people do like models um so there's lots of industries so have a little think about what industry is a 3d printer um, might use and think about how it may be developed in the future. Is it going to allow us to manufacture bones? Is it going to help us manufacture medicine? You can 3D print tablets nowadays, I'm pretty sure, as in a medicine tablet. So um, could we print specific vitamins that somebody needs? Could it be used in marketing? This is what this product's going to look like. Education, could I print out a model of a hard drive and see it working? There's loads of different applications of 3D printers. So without wasting too much time, we're going to go into RFID now. So RFID are both input and out devices. So your phone sometimes has them in, your swipe cards to get into a college or into a security room or something will have them. And the idea is inside that card, there is a transponder and a receiver. So when you get near an RFID reader, it admits a burst and that turns on the chip in your RFID, and then the transpo uh, transponder antenna inside your card will then essentially send and receive data. No, most of the time it just sends data. There's two real types. We've got passive transponders. So your bank card doesn't have a battery. So when it gets that radio wave, it turns on. Active tags have battery power and it can broadcast its own signal. So, um, it might be in a car or a van. There was a previous, I think it's a GCSE question, where it was talking about having these um, active tags inside ambulances. So it automatically changes um, toll bridges to go up and uh, traffic lights to change. An actuator, that is some sort of uh, mechanism or mechanical um, thing, really. So it could be something that opens a door or a valve, starts a pump, turns a fan, or it could be something as exciting and crazy as an aircraft accelerator or something like that. So there's loads of different uses, but essentially it's just a motor. We've also got sound output where we take digital data, put it through a DAC and convert it to an analog signal, which then gets sent through speakers using an amplifier, using a diaphragm and sent through a speaker so we can hear things. And then we've got types of screen. Quite a lot of information here, so I would definitely do a little bit more research, especially to all of these devices. Um, but especially printers and screens. But you've got LCD, which uses liquid crystals. And essentially, um, we allow certain colors of light through or we block certain colors of light to create a picture. That's sort of becoming a little bit outdated now because most TVs are OLED or LED. So LED, that's like a little light bulb, essentially. It's a light emitting diode. And it is actually um, a light source itself. But an LED TV still has a backlight. So that's why if your colours go on your TV, it's probably because the backlight's gone or broken. Um, but really, 
um, it's an LCD TV that uses LED backlighting, and an OLED actually emits its own light. So because they can turn off, you get a much deeper black and darker colours because we can just turn lights off and on. Okay, so those are all types of screen. We've just hit the five minute mark and we're done. So I would definitely go back and watch this video again. I would definitely research these into more detail. I'm not necessarily going to ask you lots and lots of details about these, but having a good understanding might allow you to apply it to a particular scenario. Thank you for watching. Please like the video, please add a comment. Please watch it through to the end. If you want to start from the beginning and go to the end, it really helps me out. So thanks a lot, and I will see you in the next video.